This is All India Radio. We now bring you a special news program on COVID-19. Good evening. I am Tanvi Tanija and with me is Renuka. The headlines. One of the biggest evacuation exercise when they Bharat mission to begin from tomorrow over 14800 stranded indians to be brought back from 12 countries over 39 crore people receive financial assistance of 34800 crore rupees under pradhan mantri garib kalyan yojana health minister says gujarat and maharashtra need to focus on more effective surveillance contact tracing and early diagnosis to reduce high fatality rate government starts arogya setu ivrs services for people not having smartphones citizens to get sms indicating their health status and top hizbul mujahideen terrorist and his associate killed in an encounter in jammu and kashmir one of the biggest evacuation exercise named vande bharat mission will begin from tomorrow under the mission the government will operate 64 flights between 7th and 13th of may to bring home nearly 14800 indian nationals stranded in 12 countries across the globe due to the corona virus lockdown minister of external affairs s jay shankar yesterday said that preparations for the operation has commenced and also urged the stranded individuals to stay in touch with the indian embassies in their countries the 64 flights which will be operated include 10 flights from uae 7 each from bangladesh malaysia united kingdom and united states 5 each from saudi arabia singapore philippines and kuwait along with 2 each from qatar bahrain and oman out of the total 15 flights will bring back people to kerala followed by 11 flights to Tamil Nadu and Delhi. Seven flights will be flying back people to Maharashtra and Telangana, whereas five flights are slated for Gujarat. Maximum number of flights in the first week of repatriation will bring back citizens from the Gulf countries. Meanwhile, the Indian Navy has confirmed that three of its ships are on the mission to get back stranded citizens from Maldives and UAE. INS Jalashwa and INS Magar will get back Indians from the Maldives while INS Shardul has been diverted to Dubai to get back the expatriates more from our correspondent These special flights will be operated by Air India and its subsidiary Air India Express the stranded people will have to bear the cost of travel government has clarified that only asymptomatic passengers would be allowed to travel besides strict adherence to the standard operating protocol for the complete process has to be followed by the carriers state government have been advised to make arrangements including for testing quarantine and onward movement of the citizens upon their return with anand kumar suparna sekya ai news delhi In one of the largest evacuation exercises of its kind Indian Navy has launched operation Samudra Setu to repatriate stranded Indian citizens from overseas Navy ships INS Jalashwa and Magar have been sent to Mali in Maldives to start the mega evacuation operations talking exclusively to all india radio news india's high commissioner to maldives sanjay sudhir said that elaborate arrangements have been made for the evacuation of indian citizens he said about 2000 stranded people are expected to be evacuated he said ins jalashwa will reach tomorrow in the afternoon and will depart from mali on 8th of this month elaborate arrangements have been made the evacuation will be carried out by two navy ships ins jalashwa and ins magar uh, the two ships have large carrying capacity with jalashwa being able to carry about 700 people and ins magar about 200 people with social distancing a schedule has been drawn up and the evacuation will start on may 8 and might go on up to may 13 or may 15 we are uh, adopting several covid related norms for this exercise this includes thermal scanning of all the passengers they will be rapid testing for all of them and social distancing norms will be observed during the travel the evacuated personnel will be disembarked at kochi kerala and entrusted to the care of state authorities our correspondent has the details 
The first evacuation of Indian nationals from Maldives will happen on Friday and a Navy ship is scheduled to bring around 700 Indians back to Kochi. Another ship will depart for Tuti Korin, carrying more than 1,000 persons. Maldives has more than 25,000 Indian nationals employed in tourism and other sectors, but COVID crisis has affected livelihood of most of them. More than 50 Indians have also been tested positive in Malay, which is worst affected and is most vulnerable to the crisis. Indian High Commission in Malay is giving preference to medical emergencies pregnancy cases, stranded tourists and job losses of migrant workers for repatriation. There are hundreds more who are looking forward to be with their near and dear ones in this crisis and they look forward to evacuation plan in coming weeks. Santos Kumar for AIR News from Colombo. In the United Arab Emirates, the Indian missions are working day and night to repatriate the distressed citizens back to the country. Indian community volunteers are working closely with the Indian missions to reach out to those who have registered on the e-portal to go back. Our Dubai correspondent has filed this report. The special flights to India amidst the global pandemic have come as a big relief to the Indian community in the UAE. The first flight on Thursday from the UAE will see approximately 350 Indians flying back to Kochi and Kozhikor. Workers who are in extreme distress situation, senior citizens, some pregnant women, students and at least three Indian citizens who were stranded at the airport during the transit are some of those who will be flying back tomorrow. Speaking to All India Radio, Council General Vipul said that the consulate is working closely with all major community organizations, including Norca, to send the first lot of the evacuees back. Health screening will be mandatory at the airport. Each passenger at the time of boarding would be handed over a safe ticket. Panchan Prasad, AIR News, Dubai. The Union Home Ministry has issued standard operation procedures, SOPs, for movement of Indian nationals stranded outside the country and also for persons stranded in India who are desirous to travel abroad for urgent reasons. As per the SOPs, the priority will be given for travel from abroad to compelling cases in distress, including migrant workers who have been laid off, people facing expiry of short-term visas, those with medical emergency, pregnant women, and elderly will also be given priority. Before boarding, all travelers will be given an undertaking that they will go mandatory institutional quarantine for a minimum period of 14 days on arrival in India. At the time of boarding, all travellers will undergo thermal screening and only asymptomatic travellers will be allowed to board. The passengers will have to register on the Aru Kisetu app. On the arrival in India, they will be screened and those found to be symptomatic will be immediately taken to medical facility. If they test negative after 14 days, they will be allowed to go home and will undertake self-monitoring of their health for 14 more days as per protocol. The SOPs for persons stranded in India who are desirous to travel abroad for urgent reasons will have to go to thermal screening. Only asymptomatic passengers will be allowed to board the flights. They will also have to follow the health protocols. The cost of the travel will be borne by the travellers. In Gujarat, as many as 1,550 people from Gujarat who are stranded in five countries due to lockdown will be brought back to Gujarat from tomorrow. CMO Secretary Ashwini Kumar said in the first phase, people stranded in the Philippines, USA, UK, Singapore and Kuwait will be brought back. A report. People from Gujarat, including students, professionals, tourists who are stranded abroad will be brought back to Ahmedabad from tomorrow. First such flight carrying 250 passengers from Philippines will arrive in Ahmedabad tomorrow. Two flights have been planned for USA, while one each for Kuwait, UK and Singapore in the current week. Tourism Secretary Mamta Verma has been given the responsibility to coordinate with the concerned authorities and ensure necessary precautions on their entry to the state. CMO Secretary Ashwini Kumar said all the necessary steps, including screening and health checkups, of the passengers will be taken in view of COVID-19. Aparna Khun, AR News, Ahmedabad. Kerala is all set to welcome non-resident Indians as two flights from UAE are scheduled to arrive tomorrow. We have a report. One flight from Abu Dhabi to Kochi and another from Dubai to Kurikot will bring the first batch of people from Gulf region to the state tomorrow. 
Chief Minister Pinarayi Vijayan said that all necessary arrangements are being done with sufficient medical teams, police forces, testing and quarantine facilities. He further said that all people arriving from abroad will be sent to the state's COVID care centers for compulsory quarantine except pregnant women with no symptoms will be allowed home quarantine. Meanwhile, three trains carrying migrant laborers left from Kerala for Madhya Pradesh, Bihar and Odisha today. Meanwhile, the remaining exams of class 10th and 12th which was postponed amid COVID-19 is scheduled to be held from May 21st to 29th. It is also decided that the evaluation of the already conducted exams will begin from May 13th. Mayusha for AR News from Tiruvannathapuram. Karnataka Revenue Minister R. Ashok has informed that over 10,800 people from Karnataka who were stranded abroad have registered with the Arugi Setu app seeking evacuation. According to the schedule announced by the central government, three flights are organized for Bengaluru. On 8th of this month, 250 people will be evacuated from UK and flown to Bengaluru. Similarly, a flight originating in USA in San Francisco on 11th of May will be bringing 300 people. And on 12th, a flight carrying 250 people will be taking flight for Bengaluru. Meanwhile, Chief Minister B.S. Yadirappa has announced that the state has increased excise duty by 11%. A hike of 6% was announced during the budget. Due to the additional increase today, the excise duty on liquor works out to be 17% now. By this hike, the government expects to mop up around 2,000 crore rupees. Even as Maharashtra continues to grapple with the spread of coronavirus infection, about 2,000 people stranded across various foreign countries are set to arrive in Mumbai over the next 7 to 10 days. Uddhav Thakre led state government has requested the centre to allow usage of hospitals belonging to defence, railways and other central government undertakings like the Mumbai Port Trust in order to ramp up its bed capacity. Our Mumbai correspondent tells us more. Addressing the press this evening, Maharashtra's Health Minister Rajesh Tope underlined that the government is making all efforts to ramp up the number of ICU beds. In view of the unabated rise in coronavirus cases, especially in Mumbai, the minister informed that quarantine facilities have been set up in Mahalakshmi Racecourse, Nehru Science Centre, Nehru Planetarium, Gorikao Exhibition Centre and PKC among others. Meanwhile, there has been a change in the schedule of flights bringing back stranded Indians from foreign shores. While the first flight was supposed to land on 8th, the same has been rescheduled to land on 10th. Speaking to air, Mumbai airport officials said all incoming passengers will be sent to quarantine facilities set up by Mumbai's civic body. They will be tested after 14 days and accordingly further course of action will be decided. With Kunar Shinde, this is Nisha Rani for AIR News, Mumbai. Around 39 crore poor and needy people have received financial assistance of 34,800 crore rupees so far under the Pradhan Mantri Gari Kalyan Yojana. The package was announced by the Finance Minister Nirmala Sita Raman in March to protect the people from the impact of the lockdown imposed due to COVID-19. As part of the package, the government announced free food grains and cash payment to women, poor senior citizens and farmers. The implementation of the package is being continuously monitored by the central and state governments to provide relief to the poor people. Fintech and digital technology have been employed for swift and efficient transfer of financial assistance to the beneficiaries. Our correspondent has the details. Under the various components of the package, 16,394 crore rupees front loaded towards payment of the first installment of PM Kisan to 8.19 crore beneficiaries. More than 10,000 crore rupees credited to 20 crore women's Janthan account as first installment. Further, 2,785 crore rupees credited to 5.57 crore women's Janthan account as second installment in this month. Besides, 1,405 crore rupees disbursed to 2.82 crore old age persons, widows and the young Jan. A financial support of 3,492 crore rupees was provided to more than 2 crore building and construction workers. During April, more than 30 lakh metric tons of food grains have been distributed to 60.33 crore beneficiaries, while 6.19 lakh metric tons of food grains were distributed to 12.39 crore beneficiaries in this month. 2.42 lakh metric tons of pulses have also been dispatched to various states and union territories. Pulses have been distributed to 5.21 crore household beneficiaries. Under Pradhan Mantri Ujjwala Yojana, a total of 5.09 crore cylinders have been booked and 4.82 crore free cylinders delivered to the beneficiaries with Bhupen Rathi, Anand Kumar, AIR News, Delhi. This is All India Radio bringing you a special program on COVID-19. Before we move on, a reminder of the headlines. One of the biggest evacuation exercises, Bande Bharat Mission, to begin from tomorrow, over 14,800 stranded Indians to be brought back from 12 countries. 
Over 39 crore people receive financial assistance of 34,800 crore rupees under Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Yojana. Health Minister says Gujarat and Maharashtra need to focus on more effective surveillance, contact tracing and early diagnosis to reduce high fatality rate. Government starts are okay say to IVRS services for people not having smartphones, citizens to get SMS indicating their health status. And top Hizbul Mujahideen terrorist and his associate killed in encounter in Jammu and Kashmir. For quick news updates round the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. Health Minister Dr. Harsh Vardhan today reviewed preparedness and containment measures taken for COVID-19 management in Gujarat and Maharashtra through video conferencing. Dr. Harsh Vardhan assured all support to the states. After a brief presentation on the status of COVID-19 cases in the states, Dr. Harsh Vardhan expressed concern regarding the high fatality rate due to COVID-19 in some districts of the states. He said states need to focus on more effective surveillance contact tracing and early diagnosis to reduce high fatality rate he also said proper interventions screening and testing of severe acute respiratory infections and influenza like illness cases need adequate attention he stressed that implementation of effective containment strategy needs to be on top priority of the states to reduce the mortality rate Union government has banned export of alcohol based hand sanitizers a notification issued by director general of foreign trade dgft said the center has amended the notification of 24th march related to export policy of sanitizers with immediate effect to ensure easier procurement of medicines by patients during the lockdown jan oshadi stores under department of pharmaceuticals are accepting the orders for medicines on whatsapp and email Union Minister for Chemical and Fertilizers DV Sadan and the Gauda in a tweet said that on the basis of uploaded prescriptions medicines are delivered at door steps of the patients Mr Gauda said Union government has also made supply arrangements with post offices to supply it to remotely located stores The recovery rate of corona patients has reached to 28.7% Health ministry said 14183 patients have been cured so far A total of 2958 new confirmed cases of novel coronavirus have been reported in the country during the last 24 hours taking the total number of cases to 49391 The ministry said government is taking several steps along with the states and union territories for prevention containment and management of covid-19 The central government has started Arogya Setu interactive voice response system IVRS services to cater to people having feature phones or landline. This service is available across the country. It is a toll-free service where citizens are asked to give a missed call to the number 1921 and they will get a call back requesting for inputs regarding their health. The questions asked are aligned with the Arogya Setu app. Based on the responses given, citizens will also get an SMS indicating their health status and will also get further alerts for their health moving forward the service is being implemented in 11 regional languages similar to the mobile application the input provided by the citizen will be made part of the arogya setu database and information is processed to send alerts to the citizens on the action to be taken to ensure their safety In our series Experts Speak on All India Radio we bring you the views of leading medical experts on COVID-19 talking to AIR News Dr Ambuj Roy of the Cardiology Department of AIMS advised the elderly people and those suffering from other diseases like hypertension and cancer to take extra precautions to avoid the infection they all have to be extra cautious so the elderly the people who already have heart disease people who have had brain strokes people who have lung disease people who have some kind of cancer in general who are people who are more than 65 years of age they are much more prone to a more severe form of the disease if they get the disease so it's very important that these people be especially careful and take all these measures even more seriously Dr Narish Gupta of the LNJP Hospital Delhi suggested to the people to maintain hygiene and social distancing 
sanitation, hygiene, hand hygiene, masking, this social distancing, nobody should try to break that rule, I would call it. That social distancing, which actually, as I said, is physical distancing, would save you not only from coronavirus, but also save you from dozens of other viruses. COVID-19 pandemic has brought the government, scientific community, academia and industry together in finding solutions to the challenge. Speaking exclusively with AIR News, Principal Scientific Advisor to the Government of India, Dr. K. Vijay Raghavan said that both basic and applied aspects of technology are being utilized to contain the pandemic in the country. Our academics, both basic and in applied areas, have come together and they are addressing extraordinarily complex problems in partnership with startups and industry. Industry has come together to work with government and academics and others to solve major problems. It's very reassuring and heartening to see how people come together. And our challenge is to ensure that this kind of cooperation, where government is flexible and has foresight, where industry partners with government and with academia, where academia takes on adventurous projects, all these things are lasting and not a transient during this pandemic. Union Home Secretary Ajay Palla has written a letter to Chief Secretary of West Bengal after receiving feedback from two inter-ministerial central teams, IMCTs, which visited the state. Mr. Bhalla in the letter said COVID-19 in West Bengal characterized by very low rate of testing and very high rate of mortality at 13.2%. He said mortality rate due to COVID-19 is in West Bengal by the far highest rate for any state. Home Secretary said it is reflection of poor surveillance, detection and testing in the state. He said there is also need to increase random testing in crowded clusters. Mr. Bhalla said lockdown violation noted in Kolkata and Howrah by specific groups in specific localities with media reports of corona warriors including police being attacked. He said it necessitates stricter enforcement of lockdown by enhancing police presence. The letter said there have been instances of overcrowding in bazaars, bathing of people in rivers, people playing cricket, football during lockdown in West Bengal. He said there is a serious laxity in enforcing lockdown measures in containment zones. About 120 lakh tons of food grains are being distributed free to 80 crore individuals during COVID-19 crisis under the Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Anna Yojana. Consumer Affairs Ministry said each of the individuals will be provided double of their current entitlement during April, May and June this year. Uttar Pradesh government has increased the tax on liquor, petrol and diesel in the state. The decision was taken in the state cabinet meeting chaired by Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath. Our Lucknow correspondent reports that the hike in country liquor and foreign liquor prices is projected to generate a revenue of 2,350 crore rupees. The prices have been increased for all the categories of foreign liquor. Informing about the decision of cabinet, Finance Minister Suresh Khanna said that the hike for Indian-made foreign liquor is in the range from Rs 10 to Rs 400. Along with liquor, the tax on petroleum products have also increased. The price of petrol has been raised by Rs 2 per litre and of diesel by Rs 1 per litre. This will raise an additional revenue of Rs 2,070 crores. These hikes will come into effect from midnight today. Cabinet also gave approval to the amendments in Mandi Act with the aim to promote ease of doing business and increase income of farmers amid lockdown. Sushil Chandra Tiwari, AIR News, Lucknow. In Himachal Pradesh, the process of bringing back the stranded people from various parts of the country is still on. In view of COVID-19 infection, the state government has decided an ex gratia amount of 50 lakh rupees to the driver, conductor and other staff deployed in bringing back the people stuck in other parts of the state. Our correspondent has more. On the lines of Corona Warriors, the state government has decided to give an ex gratia amount of rupees 50 lakh to the next of kin on death of HRTC driver, conductors and other staff during the COVID-related duties. It may be recalled that drivers and conductors of HRTC are engaged in bringing back the large number of students stuck in Kota of Rajasthan, Delhi, Chandigarh, Tri-City area and other parts of the country in wake of nationwide ongoing lockdown. Meanwhile, Jairam Thakur thanked the Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath for sending back 22 students studying at various institutes in Varanasi. All the students are likely to reach Himachal tomorrow. Sanjeev Sundarial, AIR News, Shimla. 
In Madhya Pradesh, in a first of its kind initiative, a unique vehicle has been developed at the local level. With the help of this vehicle, health workers can investigate any suspected patients without coming in contact of them. This vehicle has been named Sanjeevani. Our Bhopal correspondent has filed this report. This unique vehicle designed at the initiative of Rajnagar administration at Chhatarpur district is highly useful for health workers. Rajnagar SDM Sopnil Vankhede told AIR that now health workers will be able to go inside any area by Sanjeevni vehicle and they can investigate any suspect without getting out of the vehicle. जो भी हमारे हेल्थ वर्कर रहेंगे डॉक्टर रहेंगे वो किसी भी संक्रमित एरिया में जाएंगे तो उनको गाड़ी के नीचे नहीं उतरना होगा गाड़ी के अंदर से ही वो संक्रमित को जांच कर पाएंगे इसमें जो कैमरा लगा हुआ है इससे उनका फोटो लिया जाएगा और इंफ्रारेड सेंसर है इससे उनका टेम्परेचर लिया जाएगा और ये पूरी जानकारी अंदर दिखेगी जिसमें ऐप में उसको अपलोड किया जाएगा उसके बाद उसको प्रशासन को भेजी जाएगी विद सुनील पांडे फ्रॉम छतरपुर संजीव शर्मा ए न्यूज भोपाल In Jharkhand, dedicated efforts of our Corona warriors have brought out some positive results. Another district becomes a Corona-free district in Jharkhand today, as a single positive patient of Giridhi district was relieved from COVID-19 special hospital. The lady was released from the hospital today after her medical test reports of COVID-19 infection turned out to be negative. Presently, there are 91 active cases in Jharkhand, while 35 patients have recovered from this disease. In the ongoing fight against COVID-19, a four-year-old child, Riddhi Jain, from Hajirabagh in Jharkhand, has made an emotional appeal to the people to download the Arogya Setu app. Namaste, my name is Riddhi Jain. I am 4 years old. I am an Arogya Setu app. I am a bodyguard. I am a coronavirus. I am a coronavirus. तो मैं आपको पहले ही अलग कर देता हूँ भारत सरकार ने मुझे हर देशवासी के लिए पर्सनल बॉडी गार्ड बनाया है इसलिए कोरोना से डरोना बस आरोग्य सेतु ऐप डाउनलोड करो ना Actor Arshad Varsi has appealed to people to follow social distancing measures and take all preventions to guard against the COVID-19 outbreak. He called for unity in the fight against the virus outbreak. Today, the whole country is sitting at home, so you will be alone. Don't 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 be alone. Our administration is doing everything to help you. Please let them help you. Stay positive. Stay home. Stay safe. Play your part. The News Services Division of All India Radio in its bilingual live phone-in program tonight will bring you a special discussion on COVID-19. This can be heard tonight on FM Gold Channel and additional frequencies from 9.25 p.m. onwards. Dr. Prashun Chatterjee, Senior Physician at AIMS, will participate in the discussion. Union Minister for Human Resource Development Ramesh Pokhreal Nishank has said that exams for 10th class of CBSE are over for all the country except in northeast Delhi and adequate time of 10 days will be given to all stakeholders before starting the examinations the minister also clarified to the students of northeast delhi that there is no need to reappear in these board examinations if they have already appeared In Jammu and Kashmir, Operational Chief Commander of Hizbul Mujahideen Riaz Naiku and his associate were killed in a gunfight with security forces in Pulwama district today. According to official sources, a joint team of police, Army's 55 Rashtriya Rifles and CRPF launched a search operation in Begpora area late last night. As they zeroed in on a house, the terrorists opened fire which was retaliated by the security forces, triggering an encounter in which two terrorists were killed. The slain commander had a bounty of 12 lakh rupees on his head and was the most wanted terrorist. The 35-year-old Naiku who hailed from Bekpora area had joined terrorist ranks in 2010 and was one of the close aides of Hizbul commander Burhan Wani who was killed in Kokarnag area of South Kashmir in 2016. Naiku had taken the reins of Hizbul Mujahideen soon after Burhan Wani's killing. Meanwhile, two more terrorists were killed in an encounter with security forces at Sarshali Kru area of Avantipura. 
The government has announced further relaxations for filing of annual returns for goods and services tax GST and movement of goods in the country. The Central Board of Indirect Taxes Customs CBIC has extended the time limit for furnishing of the annual return and GST audit for the financial year 2018-19 till 30th of September this year. And now before we end here are the headlines once again. One of the biggest evacuation exercises one day Bharat mission to begin from tomorrow. Over 14,800 stranded Indians to be brought back from 12 countries. Over 39 crore people receive financial assistance of 34,800 crore rupees under Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Yojana. Health minister says Gujarat and Maharashtra need to focus on more effective surveillance, contact tracing and early diagnosis to reduce high fatality rate. Government starts Arogya Setu IVRS services for people not having smartphones, citizens to get SMS indicating their health status. And top Hizbul Mujahideen terrorist and his associate killed in encounter in Jammu and Kashmir. And with that, we end the special news program on COVID-19.